The Soviet Union has its own variety of Men in Black, an organization that investigated cases related to visits to Earth by aliens and UFOs. However, unlike Hollywood, the agents were not secret, but quite official, called the Commission on Anomalous Phenomena of the Russian Geographical Society of the Soviet and later Russian Academy of Sciences. And instead of fantastic technologies in each individual case, they relied on common sense, rationality, and a scientific approach. We want to remind you that here we're not speaking about the operations of the top secret Soviet military slash academic UFO research program called Sietka. It had other names too during its existence 13 years after it officially ended. We described its work and discoveries known to us and other civilian researchers, and today we want again to look at a different entity and provide more details. Despite all ostentatious materialism, interest in the paranormal phenomena in the USR was very strong. So back in the 1970s under Brezhnev, the Commission on Anomalous Phenomena came to be in Leningrad, and it was on the basis of the Russian Geographical Society. The Commission areas of interest included everything that could not be explained by traditional science, from UFOs to poltergeists. This Commission on Anomalous Phenomena of the Russian Geographical Society of the Soviet Academy of Sciences existed between 1980 and 2014. We've been in open contact with some Soviet ufologists since 1991 and in other types of contact before, so we knew about this commission and later we became acquainted with some of its members. The Commission on Anomalous Phenomena of the Russian Geographical Society was organized in 1980 by the efforts of enthusiasts, researchers of unidentified flying objects, poltergeist and other anomalous phenomena in the environment. The Commission conducted research in the following areas, the history of civilization and polio context, better known to the West as ancient alien hypothesis. Soviet scientists and researchers had been investigating this hypothesis well before anyone outside the Soviet borders, also problems of astronomy and astrophysics and anomalous phenomena, interviewing eyewitnesses of anomalous phenomena and their study, they were working to create a so-called systemization to work out the process of how to do it properly. They were also conducting research on bioenergic or bioenergetic aspects of the issue or problem of anomalous phenomena. History, religion and the problem of anomalous phenomenon, military aspects of the UFO problem and so on. After more than 30 years research activities in the Commission on Anomalous Phenomena, it had acquired experience study, first of all of unidentified flying objects. It created an archive of observations of anomalous phenomena. This is like paranormal phenomena in English. But Russians use that word. They develop techniques of questioning witnesses and criteria for the reliability of the information. The Commission had conducted instrumental studies of the landings of UFOs in various regions and using various devices primarily in northwest Russia. It had also developed a methodology of research and there has been philosophical evaluation of the achieved results. The Commission consisted mainly of military people and almost all with high ranks and that's according to the Russian ufologist and former chairman of the Leningrad Commission, Mikhail Gerstein. We've known of Mikhail now for over 20 years, and we believe that he is the best UFO researcher in Russia today. Mikhail mentioned in an interview with Russian media that the activities of the commission, associates or members were not exactly classified. Rather, it's simply all this activity was not brought to the attention of the general public in the Soviet Union. The meetings were closed to foreign participants in the Soviet Union and the reports were often stamped with a signature stamp saying for office use only. Soviet and later Russian scientists, academics, professors and candidates of sciences also worked as part of the commission. For almost 30 years they had conducted several hundred expeditions and interviewed probably thousands of eyewitnesses, said Gerstein. Nine times out of ten, there was nothing really strange about their stories. People could mistake anything for a UFO, from an aeroplane flying with its lights on to planet Venus, 
but still, it was always the one in ten lucky cases, and sometimes it happens so the impression of an encounter with the unknown redeem everything, and then some. For example, in the years 1989 to 1993, in a district of Leningrad, in a village, people encountered huge two and sometimes three meter tall dark figures without faces. All the eyewitnesses said that the figures were moving, either walking, but as if their legs didn't bend at the knees, or they were floating in the air. Those aliens showed no hostility to humans. As a rule, they were just nearby humans. During a five-year period, he'd said that they'd maybe eight or ten reports of a meeting with them and from people who are not related to each other in any way, and they didn't know each other at all. According to Mikhail, one of the eyewitnesses saw this creature come out of a flying saucer that landed on a vacant lot near the village. So Gerstein went to the place himself. He traveled there, he followed the route where the black or dark figures were most often seen, and tried to find a tree or a bush or some pipe in the dark. Could have been mistaken for a human silhouette outline, but he didn't find anything. Mikhail is a very tenacious researcher and also knows firsthand about the so-called extraterrestrial implants, foreign objects that were inexplicably found in human bodies. One scientist injured his hand at the Dachau country home and he went for an x-ray and a foreign body was found in his hand. The doctor thought it was a fragment from some mine or shell. However, it turned out that no mines or shells were near the scientist, of course, and nothing had exploded recently or at any time. It didn't look like a shard, but rather a metal seed, smooth and rounded at the edges, according to Gerstein. Such stories have been found in the media for at least the last few decades. Almost almost people who talk about the phenomenon have experienced blackouts. Many years before all of these events, a scientist was traveling on a train home and at one point seemed to lose consciousness, fainted and woke up two hours later in a completely different train carriage. His money and personal belongings were still with him. Nobody had taken anything. The Russian researcher mentioned that ufologists believe such implants can be used as striking devices. Unfortunately, that scientist categorically refused to remove the strange object from his hand, and soon after he passed away. Of course, the Commission's powers extended not only to Leningrad and the Leningrad region. For example, a report dated March 12, 1984, reported a case in a village in the Crimea Soviet Ukraine. Three boys found a three-meter-long metal disc in a brushy hollow with a black spot in the center that looked like a rocket nozzle. Through the transparent lid, you could see the outlines of some devices and a flashing red light. The students tried to get closer, but a few meters away, they seemed to run into an invisible wall. On the following evening, the boys told about finding two military cadets that they knew. The cadets, being Soviet people, conducted an educational conversation with the boys on the subject of materialism and racism and decided to visit the place where the alien object had been discovered. So the cadets did not find the device itself, but they found deep dents in the ground, left by its telescopic legs, bushes broken by some massive object, and a circle of burned grass, found exactly in the place where the nozzle had been located, so it immediately raised the skepticism of the cadets. The experts of the Commission on Anomalous Phenomena were dispatched to that location. They too couldn't find rational explanations for what they had observed and therefore decided to consider the incident and manifestation of UFOs. There are many unknown strange things in the universe that are still incomprehensible to the human mind, but he is sure that sooner or later we will reach a level of development that will allow us, if not to study these things from beginning to end, at least be able to come closer to understanding them. Now let's listen to what another member of the Commission had to say. It was the Deputy Chairman of the Commission on Anomalous Phenomena of the Russian Geographical Society, Captain First Rank Soviet Navy Ivanji Litrinov. He was interviewed by Russian media back in 2010. His views may be controversial to some, but his knowledge of their Soviet Union and international underwater submersible objects phenomenon is phenomenal. We've studied his findings and his tremendous research work. Litrinov served with honor in the Soviet Navy. 
He served at secret facilities and aboard submarines and had good access years ago. Anyway, the captain was asked the following, why did you and your colleagues believe in aliens? And he said that after comparing facts received from residents of different parts of our planet, all of them agree on one thing. All the people inhabiting the Earth in ancient times had so-called paleo-contacts with representatives of more highly developed civilizations. There are more than 20,000 pieces of evidence of direct or indirect influence that aliens have had on our lives in our files. That was his response, so he was asked, where do you get your information from? And he said, from the press and from secret military archives. Sometimes we organize an exhibition in St. Petersburg. That's the name of Leningrad during the event, he said. Visitors would come up to us and tell us unique stories pertaining to contacts with aliens. People would like to believe that we are treated humanely, but we must face the truth, and here's what he stated. Analyzing the information we have accumulated only on contacts with extraterrestrials, we have 6,000 messages and more than 25,000 cases related to kidnapping. We have come to the conclusion that these civilizations somehow affect our lives are of three types. Loyal to us humans, about 20%, neutral, 60%, and aggressive, 20%. If we put the neutral closer to the aggressive, that is those that have some selfish interest in humanity. It turns out that humans should be afraid of 80% of aliens. And as for alien abductions, in many cases of such kidnappings or abductions, people reported that they had been thoroughly sanitized and medically examined. Perhaps this is necessary for the study of human species, but it is possible that some of their doctors zombify people or do worse. They insert chips, implants, for subsequent manipulation of human beings. Any civilization is interested in the presence of its agents on an alien planet. So he was asked if it turns out that any alien can do whatever they want with us and there is no control over it. Lidwina replied that this was correct but the Commission exists to gradually eliminate our illiteracy or relation to the representatives of other civilizations, and the Commission associates were always trying to develop at least some safety techniques. The Russian captain warned that, first of all, people need to know if a ship or a vessel or an alien has manifested in front of you, you should not in any case scream or yell. All this according to the stories of people who've been in such situations or turned into numbness or amnesia. For them, it is good if the memory loss is temporary. But it happens that uninvited guests can erase memories completely of people affected, including information about the name, place of residence and professional skills. Secondly, contacts with alien is not welcome. The entire initiative should be as follows, only if they need to. They will come in contact with you, but if not, turn around and run away. When they try to talk to you, you must ask, who are you and where are you from and what do you do? Why do you need me? Loyal aliens often respond kindly and tell you about their good mission. Aggressors can refuse to contact you and they just leave. Thirdly, if you can, try not to think about bad things. The aliens are able to read human minds as thoughts are nothing but waves that are a means of communication for the entire universe. We think in images, and sometimes before we have formed a verbal version of it, we can also get an instant reaction from aliens. Also, these waves can transmit information to humans as if talking to humans in these same images, and humans can see them as if in a dream. Soviet cosmonauts were not afraid to speak out, and the incredible knowledge they possessed, like Pablo Popovich, about ancient aliens operating on our Earth. Now Litwina was asked on occasion, why can't the aliens train us humans? Why can't they raise us to their level? And he responded, perhaps we are as far away from them in development as the simplest insects are from us. Try explaining to an ant why you are moving its nest out of the way, or why you've killed half a dozen of his friends who tickled your heel when you were sitting by the fire. The ant will not understand you for sure. This is how the higher civilizations are. It's good if they're loyal, that is, they behave carefully with us. But there are aggressive and neutral ones, and Litvina reminded people that there are probably many more of them than the good ones. 
It doesn't bother them at all to crush humans like small insects. Their plans are unknown to us because they do not engage in conversations with people, but mainly use people for some research or introduction of their agents into terrestrial society. Probably loyal and aggressive civilizations are fighting for planet Earth at the highest level according to him. Whoever wins will establish their own rules here. We have little information about who lives in what parts of the universe, so loyal aliens come to humans according to Luwina from the constellation of Canis Major and Taurus, and the neutral ones from the constellations of Reticulum Centauri, Cygnus, Libra and Andromeda, and then of course there's the Orion constellation and that's where the aggressors come from. Lidvina was asked if you believe in the existence of your force, you should probably have been the first to establish contact with them. But he responded that he doesn't want to do that. If they had wanted to, they would have contacted us humans long ago. And in general practice, it shows that everyone who did establish such contact passed away. Despite his advanced age, Captain Ledvinov did not want to go to the other world yet or to leave this planet. When some journalists in Russia try to make fun of the Russian Navy captain, who doesn't shy away from his beliefs, they were told by representatives of the Society of the Following, the Geographical Society is called to discuss all sorts of theories, even such fantastic ones as Litvinov's theories. If there are specialist scientists who can refute the theory of the members of the Commission on Anomalous Phenomena, the Russian Geographical Society is waiting for their letters and invites them to meetings that take place once a month according to the approved plan. That was years ago. The UFO research that had existed in the USSR had a tumultuous history. The Soviet research was unique due to the constraints of the totalitarian society, but there had been fascinating cases. Russian authors' books and videos have done their best to help build bridges many years ago and introduce Western audiences to Soviet ufology. But they were shocked when certain individuals in the West immediately attacked their work. It was as if they were panicked about information that is being brought forth from the USSR or the former Soviet Union, because obviously there are people who don't want bridges to be built and information exchanged on a civilian level. A lot of what we've talked about today is in the past, now history. The USSR disintegrated and new realities now exist where a unique country existed for almost 70 years and that in turn after another country, the Russian Empire, disintegrated after hundreds of years. But there is active research, for example, in Ukraine today and that there are still civilian researchers in modern Russia the younger generation, and as for military UFO research in modern Russia, will talk about it more some other time, and there is still more to bring into the very unique history of Soviet UFO research.